I wanted to welcome you along to this Innovate to Accelerate um, um, Gearing for Growth um, webinar this morning, which we're working with our partners access to funding today. Just before we get going, I want to just go over a few of the house rules today. Um, can you always make sure that you keep your um, keep your um, Zoom set to, to mute? Um, and um, what we're doing is we're, if you've got any questions, we're encouraging you to ask questions in the chat or to raise your, your virtual hand. And there will be a time at the end of the session today when you you know there will be a Q&A slot and um, feel free to do that there as well. But what we're just going to do um, is, is just get right underway. So I'm going to hand you over to um, two colleagues from Access to Funding, Brian Morgan and Karen McCann. And so Brian, I think you're first up, so I'm just gonna hand straight over to you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Well, I hope you're doing well. Uh, so my name is uh, Brian Morgan, uh, and I'd like to, to obviously welcome you to our, our, our webinar today for Innovate to Accelerate Gearing for Growth, and hopefully it will be of, uh, of, of good information to yourselves, um, and you'll be able to, to potentially ask some questions at the end and, and maybe see a use to, um, to the information we're about to give to you. And so we'll be hosting this uh, with myself and my colleague, uh, Karen, who's our tax specialist, and she'll uh, pick up a couple of the slides uh, in a few moments. Uh, so I'll just quickly run over the agenda. Uh, so the agenda for today, so naturally we're going to cover a little bit about access to funding, give you a, a little bit of an idea of, of who we are. Uh, we'll cover uh, creating innovation, so what that looks like and, and, and how you as a business or how your, your, your network or, or, or clients might uh, look to innovate. Uh, how that will impact upon your business, uh, and obviously there'll be positive impacts. Um, we'll look at funding and finance options. Uh, we'll obviously cover the fundamentals of research and development, or R&D, and various other products and services that we offer. Uh, we'll look at some HMRC statistics, uh, which will give you a good idea on, on, on the schemes and, 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 and how, how they are utilised. Uh, we'll look at a few case studies. Uh, there'll be a video in there as well, just to give you uh, a good indication instead of it coming from us, it's coming from, from one of our clients, the type of services and, and, and offerings that we're able to offer. And then at the end, we'll close with a, a little bit Q&A. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, obviously, uh, as Alan suggested, there will be a, a sort of raise, raise hand aspect or uh, using the notes and, and we'll sort of field them as they come in. Um, so, yeah, moving on. So access to funding, a little bit about ourselves. So. We are one of the UK's fastest growing uh, experts within, um, within R&D, uh, or research and development. Uh, we cover um, the whole of the UK, uh, so servicing obviously England, Scotland and Wales. Uh, our head offices are actually based uh, in, in England, uh, but we have, we have obviously representatives and offices throughout the, 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 throughout the UK, but our, our head offices are based in, in Liverpool in England. Um, we are obviously specialists uh, within research and development, uh, or R&D for short, and it's tax uh, incentives. Um, we have an expert team of accountants working within uh, access to funding, and they are predominantly industry leading specialists uh, within their chosen speciality. Uh, as I said, we will cover our products uh, later on, but the, you, you'll get to see that the, 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 where, where they specialise in and obviously tax managers. And we have one of our tax managers on with us today, as I said, Karen, who will cover one or two slides as we're moving on to the sort of the nitty gritty of what we do. Um, we offer full service support throughout the claims process. Uh, how I like to sort of put that to, to the people that I speak with uh, and business owners that I speak with is it's essentially a consultation service. We give you full full consultation from start to finish. We will look after you. We will give you uh, uh, information, as much advice and, and pointers as we can um, to help ensure that the process, firstly, is a success and we can maximise uh, any funding that will come to you and your business. But uh, secondly, so that you're able to plan and use this information for going forward, uh, it might help you make decisions, obviously, on projects, how you want to develop your business, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and other areas of expertise included in embedded capital allowances. So just quickly going over the other areas that we office, obviously offer. So embedded capital allowances, 
uh, land remediation relief. Uh, you have patent box, which is obviously quite neatly tied into innovation and potentially R&D and property embedded fitting, uh, fittings and fixtures allowances as well. So create an innovation. Um, so innovation, basically, uh, what, how that would be is uh, you're looking at your business uh, and you're, you're, you're obviously asking yourself what is innovation or, or the purpose of innovation. So what we would look to do is work with you uh, initially to try and find out uh, the innovation that, 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 that you might have within your business and encourage you, obviously, to do that going forward. And the reason why these schemes are in place is precisely that, is to encourage UK businesses to innovate basically keep on the front foot uh, within a sort of global sense. Uh, so creating new value and or capturing value in a new way would be a way of innov innovating. Uh, if you were changing any processes, any rules, workflows or infrastructure, that could also be classed as innovation. Uh, adapting to make something suitable for a new purpose or, a, or an environment. Uh, so any products or any processes, anything that you do really at all uh, where you're adapting uh, to make suitable for a new purpose, uh, or, or, which hasn't obviously been done previously, then that would also be innovating. Uh, and improving any existing processes, systems, and naturally any products, any end products that you, you might say manufacture, um, that would obviously also be innovating. Now, there are various impacts on the business. And as I said at the beginning, these are these are positive impacts uh, and they will only ever lead to more positive impacts the further that you invest into these, um, these schemes and way of thinking to help grow your business. So there's physical improvements or physical impacts. So there's an improvement in the process for the industry, uh, which means companies completing the, uh, the R&D process can see an improved output or an improved business growth as a direct result of, of the, the R&D uh, work that they are carrying out. Uh, naturally, uh, as, as that sort of takes its, its life forward, uh, you would like to think there would be industry recognition. Uh, that may come in the, in, in the guise of awards um, for any advancements being made. Uh, it will obviously bring you naturally some excellent publicity, hopefully probably in the media, uh, and the various sort of social media platforms. Uh, companies obviously are very good at promoting their own news, but that will be picked up obviously if you're covering uh, new ways of doing things and discovering new innovative ways of, of carrying that out. And it will hopefully give you a competitive edge because you will be naturally offering something that perhaps isn't in the industry already uh, and it will make you uh, unique. It will be a, a, obviously a unique point to you, to you and your business. Um, and then guaranteed up to, up to date uh, with the understanding in, uh, of the industry that you operate in and you're putting on the cutting edge of your industry development. So a lot of good physical um, impact. There's obviously a financial impact to that as well. So it's an opportunity to bring new products to market for profitability. So if you are investing heavily in creating a new product, uh, you obviously launch that to market. You would like to think that it would be a success and naturally you have the, the profitability of that product uh, coming back into your business. Uh, you're able to invest in further or future business opportunities for expansion. So a lot of our clients will uh, use the funds that, they, that we are able to secure for them uh, and they will look to then further invest that into the business um, for other opportunities, whether that be projects that they might not have considered but now have capital to be able to consider, uh, or just expansion. You could be expanding a line, for example, in a manufacturing plant. You could be expanding a team by adding new employees. Um, lots of lots of good, good opportunities there. Uh, and then obviously it will help fund further research and development projects. And, and this is really the crux of it. On a year by year basis, we would look to work with you uh, to ensure that you're always focusing on on, on this side of, of, of that, of, of, of the sort of parameters. And you're looking to then obviously continue to do your research and development. Uh, you know that you've got the backing. We're able to give you a, a forecast potentially and help you make these business decisions so that you're obviously always continue improving. You can continue improving your company's processes and continue improving your company output. 
and I'll pass you over to my colleague Karen, who will quickly go over uh, the various funding and finance options. So Karen, I'll pass it over to you. I'll pop myself on mute as well, so I don't interrupt. Thanks, Brian. Um, hello, everyone. And as Brian says, I'm one of the tax managers at Access to Funding, um, and I'm based up here in Scotland. So one of the first hurdles which new businesses quite often face is where do they get the funding from in order to get themselves set up and running? Um, loans and grants are two of the most common ways for businesses to, to achieve this. And while they are the same in terms of the fact that the businesses are getting money, um, they are fundamentally different. Loans, as we know, um, you have to borrow money and then you have to pay it back over a specified period of time with interest. So loans are normally provided by financial institutions, banks, government bodies. Um, and the different types of loans can obviously carry different interest rates, repayment conditions, um, and also the repayment period will be different too. And as you know, the loan has to be repaid. Um, failing to do so can result in the loss of whatever you've put up as collateral. The three main loans available are your commercial loans, government loans, and innovation loans. Um, normally, commercial loans have got a repayment of between one to, to five years. And as with most loans, you need to be able to satisfy that you're going to have sufficient income coming in uh, in order to pay that date. That date. And convertible loans are a form of equity finance. So they're usually maybe shorter term dates um, with a set interest rate. And at the end of the, the loan period, it can either be taken in shares or converted to cash. With government loans, as the name suggests, they are provided by government bodies, such as local enterprise partnerships or councils. These government loans generally have more favourable terms um, in their repayment period and interest rates than commercial loans. However, they can be limited to specific geographical areas, industries or even business types. And also try to get one of these government loans can be a bit competitive and the loans can be limited in size. The, um, the government also offer innovation loans aimed at supporting innovation initiatives. These are offered like through loan competitions to UK SMEs that want to grow and develop new or improved products, processes or services. Um, and this is the type of loan which if you're wanting to do research and developments that you'd be looking into achieving. Now as for grants, they are a great form of financing because they are a uh, non-repayable. Um, grants are usually available to help businesses that will bring social or economic benefit. For example, they're going to be creating jobs. They're projects leading to new technology or ideas and can also be for, as I've said, research and development. Now, the thing with grants is it can be very competitive in order to get a grant and the terms can be quite restrictive. However, compared to loans, there are risk-free way of obtaining finance. Um, but you will need to apply for the grant before the project has started. So the main two, main two types of grants are innovation grants and regional growth grants. So innovation grants are open to all UK businesses, academics and universities and charities. And in order to apply for the grant, the business must be planning to develop new products, services, processes that are commercially and te no, technically innovative or to improve existing ones through research and development. Um, and with regional growth grants, then these projects, these are for projects which create economic growth and they also create or safeguard jobs, often in areas that have been affected by economic decline. As you'll see, we've got a list on screen of places that you can go to to look for um, grants and funding and for some other information. Um, so now that we've had a look at the differences between loan and grants, I'm sure you're thinking, well, which one's better? Which one should I be going for? So grants are a great, a great as, as I've said, they're non-refundable. However, they are subject to strict criteria and usually limited in the amount of finance they can provide. Um, and grants can be quite competitive. On the other hand, loans are naturally risky as there's penalties for feeling failing to repay them and obviously potential loss of assets. So if you look for finance, you consider a number of factors before deciding whether it's a grant or a loan. 
which you're after. So finance, first is financing objective. Does your project um, qualify for the more specific criteria or aims of grants available in your region? If not, you might have to look for a loan. Um, the time frame. The typical grant process can take several months and obviously there's no guarantee that at the end of it, um, you're going to be successful with your application. Also, grants may only be available at certain times of the year. So how urgent is your need for finance? How quickly do you need to get the money? If time is of the essence, a loan will be more, maybe more suitable, especially as grants are often given as reimbursements. And also, this is a key factor in choosing a loan, the ability to pay. Basically, are you going to have the funds to repay it? So it might be that the best for you um, would be a combination of grants or loans for your business. Um, there are two web pages I found um, that can give you a lot of funding um, advice uh, and different options. So there is findbusinesssupport.gov. Dot Scott and also mygov.scot, um, the worth giving them a look. And also ourselves, we have, Brian will talk about this a bit more later on, but we have partners that we could link up with who would be able to help you with business startups, loans, and even grants or anything for innovation. So a third method of funding um, would be through your R&D tax credits. Um, now, as this is claimed retrospectively, it's not really suitable for your first project. However, it can be used and is available for anything which you then subsequently develop. And possibly the best place to start uh, is to define what we mean by research and development. What is it? Let's hear from some of our customers. 11,000, 34,000 pounds, 10 and a half to 11,000, 90,000 pounds, 13,000. The R&D tax credits will make a huge difference to the business. It has enabled us uh, in leaps and bounds basically to improve our business. It's helped us to continue to bring out new products, innovative products, can even give us part-time employment within the warehouse, things like this. It will enable us to take on probably three to four more staff and increase our output by about two million pounds a year. Simply put, R&D is the generation of new knowledge. In a business context, it's really the activity that companies undertake to develop new products, processes or services or to improve those that already exist. In order to do this, businesses often have to take risk and this is because they're uncertain if what they're attempting to do is feasibly possible and they're not, obviously not going to know the best way of going about it. So there's going to be a lot of trial and error um, to find where they find out what works and what doesn't work. And R&D isn't always successful, but all these costs are eligible for relief, not just those costs which relate to successful projects. Now, in order to be eligible to claim the R&D tax credit, your business has to be a UK limited company liable to pay corporation tax. Unfortunately, at the moment, there's no similar scheme available for sole traders or partnerships. So the, the scheme was introduced um, a way back in 2000 because the UK government wanted to encourage companies to invest in innovation. The scheme is designed to nurture and reward UK companies for doing just that, meaning if a company's got an idea of making a new product or changing a current process for the better, then they're going to be rewarded for that step in the form of tax credits or a tax reduction. It supports those businesses that look to improve or overcome any challenges or uncertainties which it faces. Now these projects I've already said do not need to be successful. If you think about it, when you take on to, to develop something new, it doesn't always work first time, does it? So there's a lot of there's often a lot of trial and error and wastage, and you can claim all of these costs. Believe it or not, R&D is essential function to many businesses. Launching new products, services, or improving existing ones is a way for a business to remain competitive and to make a profit. So you can make a claim for any projects which have taken place in the last two financial years. 
So what's the incentive for R&D? Well, companies can claim either a corporate tax reduction or a refund if they're in a game position. And if they have to be in a lost position, then these losses can be converted into cash and paid directly to you. So R&D tax credits allow you to recoup up to 33 pence in every pound on spent on qualifying costs. Now that's some amount of return for investing in an innovative product. As we've already heard, grant funding is a great way um, of helping to grow your business and use R&D projects is no exception. But just a word of caution, as it can make a difference to your R&D claim. Depending on the type of grant which you receive, it can limit the amount of R&D relief which you can claim under the SME scheme. However, if that's the case, we'll still be able to make a claim for you um, under the large company scheme, which will see a return of 10 pence in every pound. So if you are thinking of taking out um, a grant in order to help fund an R&D project, then please speak to us first because we don't want you to get to the end of the, your claim period and you get a surprise or, or a shock because of your grant. Now, every year, HMRC publish R&D stats and the latest results were published in September 2021 and it was looking at the data from the financial year 2019 to 2020. Now, surprisingly, while the total number of claims um, for the UK was 85,900, only 6% of these came from Scottish businesses. So it looks to be that there could be a lot of unclaimed R&D tax credit relief out there. And we'd like to help these businesses. That's money that these businesses could be getting from the government in order to grow their business, do more project uh, R&D projects, and just help them to survive. Now, the top sectors for both number uh, in the number and the value of claims, as we can see, are manufacturing, information, communications, you know, uh, science and technology, professional. But you can uh, R&D can be found in any sector. And it's not just limited to these top ones. And you'll see this in a case study later on. The R&D was found in one of your non traditional sectors. So at ATF, we also offer the following tax products, some of which sit nicely along together with your R&D tax relief and some which are standalone. With the uh, Research and Development Allowance, RDAs, this allows businesses purchasing assets for the purposes of performing R&D or acquiring a property where they'll carry out these R&D activities to receive 100% tax relief on expenditure. Therefore, if a company has made improvements or purchased or built a property in which it's performed these activities in the last two years, it could be eligible for the RDA claim, um, which would be an addition on top of um, their existing R&D tax credit claims. And also company cars uh, for staff carrying out these R&D activities is included here. Um, property embedded fixtures and fittings, which can sometimes be referred to as PEFs, they're available to claim if you own commercial property or furnished holiday lets. So you can claim 100% tax back on the fixtures and fittings within that property. And this includes any capital which you've invested in buying, fitting, or improving. Um, qualifying expenditure can include your heating, lighting, electrical systems, wiring, lifts, air conditioning radiators, and to name but a few. Um, these items, they may have been already present when you bought the, the property or you've subsequently installed them. And they can make a difference to the value um, of your property when it gets sold. Um, another one which we offer, another relief which we offer is a land remediation relief, and it's a corporation tax relief claimable by the landowner of contaminated land or property. And what this scheme encourages landowners to do is to clear up and restore land that has been acquired in a contaminated state. And examples of this would be if you bought a building and it had asbestos in it, or your land has Japanese, Japanese knockweed. Um, the property owners that carry out these sort of clean-up tasks can get are eligible to claim tax relief back. And the final one I'm going to talk about today is the patent box relief. Now, companies that invest in developing and exploiting intellectual property should be rewarded, and the patent box uh, regime is designed to do just that. 
So in fact, any um, profits which come from directly from your patent box can be taxed a corporation tax rate of 10% rather than the standard rate at the moment of 19%. And that is going to create increase up to a maximum of 25%, um, obviously, in April 2023. And I'll now hand you back over to Brian, who'll take you through the tax relief benefits. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Uh, some excellent information there and hopefully that will be of use to the people on the call and further afield when the video uh, gets promoted that was really good thank you very much um so yeah uh, tax relief benefits uh, and i'm sure you'll be thinking of of lots yourself but we'll we'll kind of cover uh, the, the the main ones really so I'll, I'll just run through through the list um obvious one at the very top is a reduction or a reduce corporation tax liabilities um other benefits, you're going to be able to invest into marketing, uh, rebrands and redesigns. You will obviously increase workforce within the business. You might be able to purchase new materials or kit and in turn, obviously, cost save if you were maybe per perhaps hiring this equipment, um, owning new equipment or new, new pieces of kit or, uh, or materials can obviously help uh, from a cost saving perspective. Um, it's going to lead to relationship building with external business partners. Obviously, the more involved that you are uh, within each of these processes, the more uh, people, businesses, uh, partners, consultants, etc., that you will you will come into contact with, and that will be there as support and help help your business uh, go forward. Uh, you'll be able to fund further advancements and products. And obviously, materials and processes, uh, with, the, with the benefits coming in, uh, the, 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 cap, the capital coming directly to your business, you will be able to, to invest that as you see fit. Uh, you can increase, obviously, productivity and service delivery. And you'll have the ability to, vers to, to diversize your business or, or your work uh, on new advancements. And then, obviously, lastly, the opportunity to pick up on previously unsuccessful endeavors. Um, so yeah, a various uh, range of, of excellent benefits there, and, and that will just be the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we do have a video that we'll come into at the end, which will give you um, some great examples of how it directly affected and, and helped their business. Uh, so this is the first case study here. Um, it's with, our, they were actually beginnings uh, of, of their business base or coming from Dundee, so a Scottish business, but uh, with the nature of, of the, the, the sector that they work within, uh, it's imperative to have a, a London office as well. So they, they kind of dual, if you will, uh, through uh, Dundee, uh, where their humble beginning started, and obviously are now a British brand, uh, with, uh, and it's in the fashion industry, so that uh, the, the, the hub or the hotspot for that sector will be being based in London. So they're obviously based in London. So they're called Aqua Rock. Uh, and I'll just read uh, the initial quote. Uh, these are in our words. This is their words. So the process of claiming R&D with access to funding was quick and easy. Uh, and obviously, they've already recommended access to funding to a couple of other people. Uh, and that's the good thing that uh, about this is once we do... Uh, this this excellent work for our clients is very well celebrated, and then the the people that we do help are exceptionally keen to obviously spread that word, uh, and 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 allow people to gain access. As Karen already mentioned, in Scotland alone, six percent of the uptake uh, is Scottish companies from that that figure uh, that she mentioned. Uh, just not enough. There's a lot of businesses out there not claiming um, what is essentially. Uh, there's to be claimed uh, and we are obviously here to try and help that and along with the help that we offer to our clients they're obviously looking to to spread that good news as well because it really does help and make a massive difference so aqua rock uh aqua and rock pardon me are an award-winning premium alternative uh, to fast fashion british brand with a complete focus on accessible sustainable fashion for all um they're often hit with ecological fashion um, it can be difficult to create a fabric for example that is consistent and appealing for the wider consumer and aqua and rock team noticed this gap in the market and that was their initiative uh, and, and sort of set them on their path with r d 
So whilst recycled yarn and cotton, for example, uh, already existed, clothing made from these materials was inflexible and subject to damage. So Aqua and Rock uh, sought to provide clothing made from these resources that advanced upon that which was all, uh, which was obviously already available. Now, careful to avoid green washing throughout the process, uh, they created a business model that can now act as a guideline for businesses across the world uh, and the necessary global effort to decrease negative human impact on the planet, which is obviously widespread throughout every business. Um, and, and this business was obviously looking at that as well. Um, we are able to show you a vast amount more uh, case studies. You can see the link there uh, on the slides. I'm not too sure if these slides will be shared. I'm, I'm assuming they will. So you will be able to get uh, direct access to our, our case studies. Uh, and they are all split up into various different sectors. So if you have a particular sector that you're interested in, then naturally you can go directly to that. And then you could see firsthand how people and businesses within that sector uh, have benefited from our help and obviously these these white there wider these schemes uh, moving on to the next one so this is just a quick video i'm pleased to say that our 2018 claim was for in excess of 34000 uh, pounds and we're hoping uh, it'll be a similar amount in the the 2019 tax year as well my name is Ben Brown, uh, Finance Director at Global Timber Products Limited. Global Timber was formed in 2009 and from humble beginnings back then, we've now evolved into a full-scale timber merchant uh, with our own mill machining facility here at our new site in Hickson in Staffordshire. We supply a wide range of timber merchants and builders merchants, both locally and to national chains as well, as well as joinery, trade, house builders and the general public. We originally spoke with Lee Parker, who's the business development manager uh, at Access to Funding. We spoke to him uh, initially about the R&D tax reliefs, not really knowing whether or not we'd be eligible or not. But after an exploratory call, um, we found that some of the projects that we did would potentially be applicable uh, and uh, decided to take it forward from there. Then we had a deeper dive, probably about a 45 minute call with the bid writing team, uh, with Megan and with Charlotte, to try and understand a little bit more about particular projects that we'd undertaken in the year and how they may be uh, compliant with the R&D tax credits. From then, we had a longer, more detailed call where we actually went through the projects in a lot more detail so that we can try and explain how the process worked from end to end, which materials we used, why we used them, why we had to make certain changes until we came out with the end final product. Once the, the team at Access to Funding understood the projects then, it was on to the, the costing and the cost cycles. So there was a, a little requirement from us then to come up with staff costing, contractors costings, the amount of material that had had to be reformed or changed over that process. Finally, it was a case of supplying uh, Access to Funding with the tax returns so that they could build together the case um, to HMRC um, to put forward on our behalf. We were then presented with a pack of information asked to sign it off and they dealt with the rest of it. The, the R&D tax credits will make a huge difference to the business in this tough time that everybody's experiencing at the moment. We're looking for every way that we can possible to help grow the business. And we've gone from having one molder um, to doubling our capacity last year uh, to take on a second molder. And now with this R&D reclaim, we're now in a position where we can look to take on a third molder, which will enable us to take on probably three to four more staff and increase our output by about two million pounds a year. The return on investment with access to funding was excellent um, for very, very little time and now we're exploratory meeting probably three or four hours of um, divulging that information around the costing and the projects has enabled them to take that information forward and put in a successful claim for us. Again, we're happy to do it again in 2019, 20 and, and there on. Highly recommend access to funding. The process has been very, very well managed from end to end with very little input from ourselves. It's been a minimal effort really for a maximum return. So as you can see uh, from that video, uh, that very nicely uh, summarized basically a lot of what both myself and Karen have uh, went over today. Um, as you can see, they, they, I mean, just quickly, they were looking at new product. Uh, that new product was obviously then being launched uh, into, into market. 
it was allowing them to increase. I mean, this is just sort of quick highlights, allowing them to increase their staffing. Um, so they were able to grow their team. Uh, and then there was an increase in turnover and profitability. Uh, and then it's just, there is no end to the benefits, basically. The, the, the more, obviously, you invest back in, they're able to then push that on as a business and and and, and spend that, that, that capital that comes back into the business on various avenues, um, which will help your business grow and ultimately make that business more successful. Um, but not just working with businesses on an individual basis. Uh, it was touched on earlier. Karen mentioned that there was a slide coming up where we, we would cover our partnerships. So access to funding um, partners with various different types of professionals and, and other uh, business avenues. Uh, the main obvious ones would be, for example, accountants, um, business advisors. So if you were, for example, an IFA or a, a general business advisor, um, financial partners, investors, other professionals across the UK for, let's just say if you were in a recruitment sector, for example, you obviously have uh, businesses that you have access to. Um, lots of different partners, basically. Uh, the, the, here's a quick list of, of, of some of the partners that we have in place just now. So we have a number of partners who could help you with various business financial solutions, uh, no matter what stage of your innovation journey. Uh, and that's just a quick list there. So I'll just quickly read them. Just instead, uh, Ultimate Finance Group, you've got the, the Great Annual Savings Transmit Startups, Association of Business Mentors, Western Union, Chairman Jackson, and your regional growth hubs and chambers of commerce, obviously, which this, this event has come about with. And then just finishing off with our sort of credentials. Um, so we are a highly experienced uh, organization with an expert eye for R&D. And I will stress this point. We, we have in-house chartered accountants, chartered tax advisors, and, a, a, and we obviously have a, a Scottish-based accountancy practice, which was recently acquired in 2021. Uh, we're an ACA-approved member. Uh, claim experience from SME startups to large groups with a turnover of uh, over 4 billion and ev so everything from uh, around about your sort of half a million, 750,000, um, all the way up to multiple billions. So we are able to help uh, the vast majority of businesses out there. And then lastly, again, because we are very keen on promoting it, uh, but it's always good to promote it with, so it's not coming from our mouths, if you will. So a quick joke there, just don't take it, uh, our word for it. We, if you go online, you'll see yourself. We have over 100 Google reviews uh, with an average star rating of 4.8, which is exceptionally high. Uh, we helped claim back for UK businesses in 2021 alone, uh, just shy of £17 million. Uh, and I've returned uh, an R&D tax credits of over 50, uh, well, nearing the £50 million to SME businesses to date from basically our conception to today. Uh, over 50 mil, near, nearing 50 million pound, pardon me, uh, in awards. So that's that's our credentials. And obviously I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, and this is where we would open the floor to any questions. So if you can field your questions to us, um, Alan and Michael will obviously take it from there. Well, can I just say a huge thank you to Brian and Karen for taking us through that presentation. It is. It is a minefield and it's great to hear it explained so 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 simply as well. We're going to open it to the floor to questions and um, I am, feel free to pop it in the chat or, or to raise your hand as well. I know that I, I, there's, a, there's a question there already, but I, I have a bit of a question that, that was just coming to my mind there as, as we were um, um, sort of wrapping the presentation up there. And obviously, on the back of COP last year and, and, and before, Glasgow has um, hugely been looking at innovation around green tech, and there's a lot of funding available for those sorts of um, those sorts of projects. I, I'm just wondering, you know, I'm I'm not entirely sure on whether there's tax relief available for green tech, um, and my brain was just thinking, if I'm getting tax relief for green tech, can I also still look at research and development and um, sort of um, um, tax credit, tax credit as well. I don't think I'm explaining it very well, so I'm hoping you know roughly what I mean because I'm just thinking I'm like almost double getting credit back for, for maybe like focusing on specific sectors to some extent. 
Um, I think what we need to do is actually have a look at it. You're right, you might not get, it all depends on what you're getting for the green tech. Um, you might not be eligible under the SM scheme. SME scheme, but you might be eligible under the large company scheme. Uh -huh. um, so I think we would need to, to have a look at it. It all depends if it's state aid or not, um, what scheme it will come under, but it's certainly something that we would look into for you, yes. Grand. I'm going to ask, Stuart, do you think, would you be all right to ask your question out loud? Would that be all right if I pop, pop you off mute? Is that okay? No problem, Alan. Thanks very much. Um, hi, it's Stuart from City of Glasgow College. Um, the college is host to uh, the Scottish Institute of Innovation and Knowledge Exchange, and we work with uh, a range of businesses, both large and small. But what's been really interesting in your timber merchant, to me, is, is a really good example of if a company's got a focus on R&D mm -hmm. as a sort of function, they know that they're doing R&D. So I kind of guess, in your opinion, to, and to try and increase that six percent of claims from Scottish companies, what needs to be done to try and increase awareness among Scottish businesses that actually the development work that they're doing may actually be R and D and therefore eligible for for relief. I think what we need to do is try and get the word out there, um, sort of maybe even like through sort of word and mouth advertising, marketing. I think we just need to to get make it more aware within Scotland about these reliefs that are available um, and that you may be eligible. I think something that I've found as well is a lot of companies don't actually think they're doing R and D. They think, oh, wait a minute here, this is my everyday job, and that's what you're getting at as well. So I think like so with case studies um, like that, maybe put it out there, let them see that hey, wait a minute here, it might be worth chatting to somebody. And seeing if there is anything. Yeah, I would probably probably add to that um, and and say obviously like things like what we're doing today, dealing with um, chamber growth hubs, various sort of business um, avenues, if you will. Word of mouth definitely um, is a big um, factor in this process. Uh, the partnership side of the of, of it. Um, undoubtedly that makes up a large part of our business model uh, because these partners that we work with are already dealing if you will with um, their clients or their network and these are the businesses that could be claiming uh, on this so it's really just about creating and spreading that uh, awareness I will point out as well um, to speak to us it, 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 not to say it, it doesn't cost anything to speak to us. We will speak, sit down. There'll be a consultation. We will extract the information. We will ask questions, probing questions to find out exactly uh, where that R and D is, uh, or any one of our other uh, services. Naturally, uh, and I think Karen hit, hit, hit the nail on the head there. A lot of businesses will al already be doing R and D, but will just not think that it falls into that category. Um, or they'll just take it for granted uh, that, that it's because they, it's what they do on a daily basis. But by speaking to someone like ourselves uh, and having that discussion, we, we can quickly sort of give them a steer uh, on how uh, we will be able to help them and how taking advantage of schemes such as the R&D uh, tax relief scheme uh, is something that they should seriously consider. And, and thanks, Stuart, for asking the question there as well. Um, Shay, I'll, I'll, I'll pass over to you. You've got a question. Oh. There we go. Hi, sorry. Um, so obviously to qualify for the R&D tax credit scheme, um, there needs to be a technological advancement and um, technical uncertainty as well as a systematic approach. Um, but in terms of the you know, expenditure um, for R&D, obviously every industry um, qualifies differently um, in terms of the R&D percentage of their expenditure. Um, but what would you say is sort of a rough average um, for the minimum expender pot, expenditure pot um, for you to take on an R&D claim? Karen? Um, I think we're kind of looking at the if turnover of about 750,000 um, we're looking at, but that doesn't mean to say that anything under that we wouldn't actually take on um, and have a look at and see. 
uh, see how much R&D that you do actually have available. So it's certainly worth having, having a chat with us if that's something that's of interest to you. Yeah, of course. I mean, um, obviously, you know, under the expenditure, you have your staff salary costs yeah. as well as, you know, R&D consumables. Um, do you include uh, subcontracted costs involved in yes. the project? Yeah, we've got subcontractor costs as well. They're restricted to um, 65%. That's in legislation. We also look at externally provided workers. And we can also claim stuff like uh, your heat and light um, um, software. So, yeah, anything like that. And as I was saying, we've obviously got your, your RDAs now. So if there was any capital equipment or um, like even property that you've bought um, or, or done up, then we can look into to that as well. Yeah, perfect, perfect. You you also mentioned um some of the different sectors that you provide for, um and I know this is a bit of a um a, di a different one, but do you guys do um funding for the agricultural sector in terms of R and D, um because I know there are quite a few farms that are you know more than willing to help out the you know different farms that are you know maximising the crop field in different innovative ways, but then there's it's also HMRC have added a lot to their inquiries team, um yeah, so I'm also aware that it's it's quite an iffy one. No, definitely. Um, I've re recently been looking at one from the agricultural sector. So yes, that's one that we would definitely help out with. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Oh, sorry, brilliant questions. Thank you very much, Shay. I'm just going to see is is there anyone else wanting to ask anything at all? Um, just just pop your hand up. No. Well, I what I'll maybe do is I'll I'll just draw it to an end there just now and but. I know that um, on the next slide um, um, that's just popped up is the contact details for both Karen and, and Brian. And Brian had said he wasn't sure if we'd share the slides. We absolutely will share the slides with everyone that came along today as well. And the contact details will be there as well. But feel free to take a screenshot if you like. And I'm sure they would be delighted to answer any questions because I know sometimes um, it comes to you after some of these webinars as well. But can I thank thank them both for taking us through that and, and for, for giving us that introduction to, to, to you know, um, to this field and what Access to Funding is doing as well. And I'm looking forward to over the next year um, continuing to work with you guys to sort of look at topics around this, this area as well and through our partnership as well with you. So thank you very much for coming along and, and, and opening that up today. Thank you to those that ask questions, brilliant questions. So thank you very much for that, 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 that as well. And um, if, if anyone does have any questions that they, they want to ask um, immediately following this webinar before we put these slides out, if you drop me a note, um, I'll make sure that both of is forwarded on to Brian and Karen as well. But can I say a very big thank you to everyone for joining us this morning. I hope you've all found it useful. Um, and it's the beginning of a, a, a thinking process for you or um, further cementing some of your thoughts. And I look forward to welcoming you along to another Chamber webinar soon. So thank you very much. Thank you, Brian and Karen as thank well. You. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thanks so much. Take care.